Hey, Mike, what do Kelly Slater and PT have in common? I don't know. They're both world champs? Nope. They both own Endless Summer Box Set. Oh, my God. Rad. You guys, you can get it, too. The link's in the show notes. Hey, this is Mike with the QuiverCast. Brought to you by QuiverBuilder.com. Where you buy, sell, surf. All right, good morning, everyone. We're in Huntington Beach parking lot on the north side of the pier with Mr. Pat Starkey. Here on the QuiverCast brought to you by QuiverBuilder.com. Hey, uh, so we know who you are. You're Pat. So, hey, Pat, how'd you start surfing? Wow. Uh, let's see. I guess like a lot of other kids, you know, started off bodyboarding, you know, about when I was 10, 11, was playing some, uh, some uh, organized sports, baseball, and next thing you know, a kid comes up to me and says, uh, you want to you wanna buy a surfboard? Next thing I know, I bought a $60 Old school, 90s board, loved it, and uh, just took off from there, man. It was, uh, once I got to my feet, it was all over. Uh, okay. No more boogie. And then, okay, what year was that, approximately? Oh, boy. Let's yeah. see. I was 13 at the time when I got my first stand-up wave. So, let's say, gosh, dude. Man, it's got to be mid-90s, right? Or am I, am I way off here on my age? Had to be mid early '90s when I when I got my first stand up wave, but I've uh, been boogieing since I was 10, until about 13. So you had three years of boogieing, you had a little yeah. bit of water experience, yeah, a little wig and pounded probably and a little short pounds. Southside shore break or uh, Southside seal, seal, yeah, Southside seal. So what was your first wave stood up on? Was it Northside? It was definitely definitely seal. I want to say Northside. I don't think I'll ever forget it either because the but you remember uh, the wave. I do because. Uh, just like they say, man, when that surfer gets that feeling, dude, only only you know it. And uh, from then on, I wasn't I wasn't going back down to the belly, <laughs> except for paddling and uh, paddling and standing, you know. But I, uh, gosh, dude, I, I definitely know the feeling for sure. And then you're sur- so you're surfing, and it's in the nineties. What was the crowd like? Like, were you sitting on the inside of Seal Beach? Were you going like, you know, um, that's funny that you bring that up because. 90s was a little more seal Huntington everywhere was a little more localized you know uh, than it is today uh, I surf a lot of Huntington these days and I don't see that type of vibe that I did back in the day but I do remember the Groms the older Groms back then Tecklenburg uh, you know Mikey Riley all the boys right Simmons you know and I would see him out at seal look up to him but I'd always feel that like hey you you guys from Long Beach, yeah, you know, yeah. like, you don't you, yeah, you, you're outsiders. <laughs> you know what? And I would probably do the same thing if I was, you know, locals there, but they knew, you know, as the years went on that we became locals too, you know, they knew us, they saw us out there all the time and, and it got less and less of a hassle, you know, throughout the years. But I definitely remember coming up going, you know, it's a little tougher to get waves than it is nowadays. I think, you know, even though there's more crowds today. Yeah. But your level's pretty high still. So yeah, that helps. yeah, you yeah. Get yeah. Waves you want it, when you're ripping. Yeah, if you uh, definitely get more and uh, more waves and a little more respect, I guess. If you're, you know, if they know you Were can you actually do something. Were you serving contests at that point? Not yet. I don't think I started till I was about maybe 16, 17. It was late start on the contest. I know my dad was kind of upset too about that because he was really pushing me to do baseball. You yeah. know, growing up, he's like, you know what? I remember him saying it to me when I was five. He's like, if you want to do this, do it. Give it your all. You know, you right. do it. And then about when I was 13, I felt really bad about this because he had put all this time and effort. And I'm sure this happens with a lot of kids, you know, and a lot of father, parents and stuff like this, that uh, something else came along that it just, I loved it more than baseball, you know. I just, yeah, it broke his heart, but you, you were kind of, kind of. But next thing Your I know. wasn't into baseball. Not anymore. Not at that time. I'd already been playing, you know, a good nine, you know, ten years almost straight. And then... I noticed he kind of transitioned over from taking me to batting cages and stuff to two a days on the weekends. You know, he would drive me to the beach, you know, yeah. and and stay down there all day with me. And, oh, really? Cool. And and the contest too. He would take me, and uh, he was there. He was supportive. I I couldn't ask for a better father to, to right. transition into something from like that. You know. So he's always been supporting you. A- absolutely. He, That's you awesome. Know, I know he was a little bummed, but. Uh, I'm glad he did. He, uh, and he kept that quiet, or did he share it with anybody? No, no. I, I just kind of felt it a little bit, you yeah, know, because you knew. because 
you know, playing baseball was decent, you know, pretty athletic, and uh, and there could have been something there, but you know, it got tiring. It got tired, and and here I am, 25 years, you know, 25 years later, surfing, and still love it, just like I, you know, like yeah. it was day one. It's hard when it's 90 degrees and you're on the diamond, where you could be like hanging out on the beach, and it's yeah. 90 degrees and the, the waves are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got your friends out in the water hooting yeah. and hollering, and yeah. just having sure. a blast. So, um, tell us one good short version long story short mm-hmm. uh, of a surf trip or a surf a surf story anything it can be anything hmm. you're showing up and it's you know it's four foot and offshore or you went on a trip somewhere you know uh, with all this surfing and stuff i've i haven't been to hawaii yet really yeah uh been to mex quite a few times went to tahiti once uh tahiti was probably the pinnacle uh probably the best surf trip of my whole entire life i was 20, 21. Surfing eight, good, ripping. Surfing pretty good. Is eight, that your peak? Where was your peak at surfing? Uh, go ahead, and then we'll go back to the story. Ah, uh, I'd say right now. Okay, there you go. <laughs> now you're ripping out there. Uh, this morning you're killing it. And I'll try to get better, you know, especially yeah. with the help of Rich and stuff like that. But um, Go back to Tahiti. But Tahiti, uh, never experienced anything like it. Eight or nine of us went, stood on huts in the water, you know, right, island of Marea, um, right on the water. It was just, couldn't ask for anything better. You know, we were on the opposite side of the island to go surf. We would take a bus, and I remember there was swell for that week that we were there, and uh, the, opposite of the, the opposite side of the island didn't really have that much surf. But when we took that bus ride to the other side of the island, we saw started seeing these outer reef sets start breaking, and pounding, and we were kind of freaking out because, you know, none of us have been on a trip like this and experienced this type of power and waves and stuff like that. But uh, it was unbelievable. I, I, Definitely surfed the biggest waves of my life that day, and that was probably a good 20, 20 years ago, you know, 20, How when I was, was 21. Uh, I'd say 12 to 15, wow, you know? I don't, I don't know. I'm talking faces here. I'm not yeah. talking Hawaii. I've never yeah. even been to Hawaii. But uh, when I'm just, you know, young man, you know, pretty much still a kid, you know, paddling out there and seeing these huge size waves, it definitely got to me. And uh, luckily, friends were out there with us to kind of, to kind of keep it all together and uh sweet yeah so uh so you, trips, like you didn't chicken out you were getting pushed oh absolutely dude the guys were you, you were know you a i was a little worried for sure dude yeah and uh a couple of the local guys came out too and and there was a few ways where i was just like dude I, I think there's a bigger one out the back i'm going on this one right here you know and end up <laughs> next you know i end up snaking you know a local you know and yeah, uh how'd that turn out i remember him waving to me dude just saying go in dude go in we're a quarter mile paddle out dude this is on the you know on yeah, a path shit. yeah he was but i was young at the time i was freaking out i'm like dude i think there's a bigger wave he out there. Like i am turning and going wave. on this one you know <laughs> like you know and uh I mean, there was a couple ways that we were out there on the pass, kind of closing out the pass a little bit, and it was just, you know, out of my level, you know. And yeah. uh, but but we were getting pushed. We were all, we had our friends out there. It was pretty safe, but uh, we were all kind of freaking out. But it was it was good times for sure. Right on. That yeah, no like a rad trip. So, what's currently under your feet? What are you riding today? Oh, dude. Are you riding? Are you sticking with uh, one one board, or you got a couple in your quiver? Uh, I have quite a few boards. Uh, last time I checked, I had twelve. Just gave two of them away. They're all Richard Payne boards, man. You, um, you know, Rich has kind of been like my surfing dad, I guess. So you could say my dad is no my longer mentor. with us. Pretty much my mentor, and uh, I've never ridden anything else. We've just been experimenting together, trying to find the right volume, the right size. And we're getting better and better each board. Uh, the last two he made me were, were pretty insane. Um, and I've been riding this past one that I just buckled today uh, for a good six months at least. This thing is just really? fire, dude. I'm, I have no desire so to even try. You're a little sad today due to the... Yeah, a little you bit. you waves on it? Yeah, I got a couple waves. Uh, paddled back out thinking everything was fine and reached up to the nose of the board. And that thing is pretty much creased and buckled. and. Uh, but I have a very good shaper slash uh, ding repair guy that's probably going to take it home and have it done for me tonight, you know? So pretty stoked on that. But Richard Payne all the way through. I'm not riding anything else. There you go. Well, well this might, you might have already answered this question, but of all time, all, the whole surf career, what was your favorite board? All time favorite career. It's got to be this last one because we're, it's a, it's a 5.8. Uh, it's, gosh, 25 and a half liter. Richard Payne model, man. This thing is a potato chip. It's been holding up. It's, you know, it's 
It doesn't have any glass on it. It's probably a four ounce glass, but the thing is just. Is it poly or epoxy? It's a, it's a polyurethane. Um, I have rode an epoxy in the past, just liked it. Got back on a PU from Rich on the very next board and uh, love that one even more. So I, I don't know, there's something about, there's something about the, uh, the feel uh, under my feet when I ride a PU board okay. compared to an epoxy. Epoxies are fun, I, I like them, but. Uh, a little springy and, uh, but yeah. Yeah. You, I like epoxy, but every, that's why I asked the questions. Everyone has their own theories. Yeah, the only epoxy I've ever had, I, I kind of, I bought off the rack, got a good deal uh, as a Slater Designs board, but it was fun. I'll tell you, it was a fun board. It was something new. But as soon as I got back on a PU, uh, a new board that Rich made for me, I was just in love, and, and okay. I haven't even picked up that Slater board since. So, um, yeah, Richard Payne, PU board all the way. And then the final question is going to be, if you could have any board, right, like anybody, it doesn't matter, like, they get passed away, like, all the time, like, put it on your wall. Maybe you mm -hmm. want to ride it once. What board would it be? It's pretty easy. I have a... Shaper, a pass shaper. Or well, I'm a big Machado fan, so I used to okay. ride these Merricks back in the day okay. and have these really cool designs on them. Um, but Machado being a goofy footer, uh, he, back in the momentum days, he used to draw all types of crazy stuff on their boards, yeah. and uh, he's had some pretty pretty wild ones. But if I if I had to have like a, a moment, you know, like a, a board, a that, collectible, a board. collectible board, I would, you know, I, why not? Why not my favorite surfer of all time? You know, start off with one of those. There you go. Something back to where he was right, maybe a little longer, like the ones he late 90s where they're all riding these longer yeah, yeah. potato Super, chips. Yeah, like 18 or 17 and a half. Yeah, you're like, what are they riding? These? You know, and now, and now we're all riding these little smaller potato chips. So um, definitely a uh, definitely Machado board, man. That's that's something I, I would love to have. Cherish. So uh, for the design of the shape of the board or for his artwork? Uh, or both? You want to comment? You want that board? Just, just, you that, saw momentum. just seeing him for the first time back in the day in those momentum videos and going, all right, Merrick, he's riding Merrick's, okay. And then all the guys were always coming up with some kind of weird little design, whether it be Slater, you know, Slater drew a, a crane, you know, eating a frog, but the frog was never giving up, choking the <laughs> crane's, you know, neck, trying not to be swallowed. There's, there's a lot of cool artwork. I think mainly that. The boards weren't really anything special. I don't think they would even work that well these days, Probably you know, not. to be honest with you. Yeah, but uh, like, what? Yeah, yeah, I'd probably pick it up and go, you were riding this thing. It shows you how thing. good they work. Yeah, exactly, ripping exactly, the making, them, making them look really good. But, uh... Yeah, something those maybe late 90s type of boards, you so know. So you ride it once, throw it on the wall, you just going straight to the wall? Probably straight to the wall, you know. Uh, to be honest, I don't really experiment a lot with my boards, you know. I just tell Rich, let's go, let's go a little off here. Let's go an inch, let's make it an inch shorter. Let's make okay. it, you know, a quarter inch wider, but uh, but uh, I probably wouldn't ride it. I don't, I don't ride any other boards, like yeah. long boards or really. I just kind of stick to... So it's more like a childhood or a, a young adult, like the guy you're stoked on. Yes, and still to this day, I mean, I, I don't see him surf as much as rips. like he. Yeah, man, uh, I I see more Slater these days, you know, because he's still going, which I'm stoked on. I'm pushing for him, pulling for him, because yeah. God, what is he? Almost fifty, and he's still. I think so. He's uh, he just rips, man. I, it, he gets it, you know. He's he's the best of all time, and. Uh, Rob, Rob gave him a run for his money, and I just I like Rob more because he's a goofy footer. Shoot, I'm a goofy footer, you know. Yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I was always an Aki guy. Aki guy. Love Curran, but yeah, you know, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the power like dude. Aki, you know. There's a couple cool shots. Luke Egan, Aki, back in the day, I'm, you know, you remember when you were a kid looking at the magazines, yeah. opening them up, and going, "Whoa, here we go, goofy footer, just killing it." Um, yeah, I got the last episode or issue of Surfer, and I was so bummed that like, that's it. Yeah. Era's over. Yeah, that's it's crazy times that uh, we're all going digital and. Uh, but um, I still like the old guys for sure. I'm an old guy myself now, and uh, I still look up to those same guys that I've always looked up to. You're ripping a lot of the young kids out of the water, though. Uh, trying, I'll tell you that. trying, trying to All keep right. up. Thank you, Pat. I appreciate yeah, man. It. And uh, thanks for the interview. Mike, thank you, buddy. Right. Thanks again for listening. If you like this episode, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And don't forget to visit quiverbuilder.com where you'll find your next magic board. I'll see you in the lineup. Hey, you guys. Endless Summer Box Set. This thing is legit. It's authentic. Numbered certificate in it. It has a five-frame film strip. 
from the original print, you will literally own a piece of history. It has a specially minted bronze medallion. Dude, that thing's sick. Okay, there's so much more here. Go to the show notes. There's a link on there. Go check this piece of history out. This thing's rad. Seriously. Smithsonian American History Museum has it. It took four years of research with 3.5 in production. All hand assembled. This thing's rad. So much to this awesome box set. Remastered DVD. Sharper images than the original film. But dude, this thing's so sick. Link in the show notes.